When I first started with seahorses a few years back, I did as much research as I could prior to buying and purchased captive bred Hippocampus erectus from Dan at Seahorse Source. The seahorses were very strong and healthy and started breeding almost immediately. Unfortunately, I wasn't prepared and didn't have the real knowledge to actually raise the fry. Somehow, each batch, a few would live. And so, I ended up with these three beauties in a five-gallon macro tank. I did the best that I could for them, and they were doing very well at first. Little William especially was such a gorgeous seahorse. His pretty yellow coloring and unique markings for an erectus made me so proud that I had raised him. Unfortunately, right around the time that these guys turned a year old, we ran into a few problems. The first problem was a temperature spike. I kept the tank at 74 degrees or less always, and unfortunately the heat did not get turned down one day and the tank hit 80 degrees. I fixed it as quickly as I could, but the other problem was that they were just getting really big. And I had planned to move them to a bigger tank, but it just wasn't happening quickly enough. All of a sudden, I noticed little William getting darker. He started showing white splotchy marks around his body and he just seemed stressed out and unhappy. Soon enough, the white splotches turned into actual missing pieces of skin. I had absolutely no idea what to do and was just devastated watching my beautiful yellow seahorse turn black and lose skin. It was just awful. So I took some pictures to my mentor at the time, Felicia, and asked her what was going on and what I should do. After doing a lot of research and with Felicia's guidance, I came to the conclusion that this was indeed a bacterial infection, likely caused by Vibrio. Uh, it could have been because of water quality, the seahorses were too big and I wasn't doing water changes enough. We also found Aptasia in the tank, which can cause stings and peeling skin like this, but I decided to treat based on a bacterial infection. I put all three of the seahorses in a quarantine tank, hospital tank, and treated with the following meds. Okay, so I lost my Furin 2 packaging, but these are the two medications that I use for bacterial issues when I'm not sure what's going on. Um, and in this case, for the skin eating bacterial issue that was plaguing my seahorse. Um, actually, luckily enough, they both have the exact same instructions because when you mix medications, sometimes you have to be very careful to make sure that certain amounts stay in. Like with copper, when you do your water changes, you have to make sure that you put back as much as you take out and don't overdo it. But with these two, they have the almost exact and same instructions. The instructions for both the Furin 2 and the Triple Sulfa are for every 10 gallons or 38 liters of water, you empty one packet directly into the tank that you're using. After 24 hours, you repeat that, adding another packet of each. Wait in a 24 hour period, so after 48 hours total and two packets, you would do a 25% water change, and then you repeat that. So, basically, you put in a packet the first day before you add the seahorses, you add the seahorses, 24 hours later you add another packet, 24 hours later you do a water change and then add another packet, 24 hours later you add another packet. So four days, four packets, sometimes has to be repeated. 
Um, so I literally feel the amount in the packet, and I use a five gallon tank, and we'll dump half the packet in, and then make sure to fold it over and seal it closed, and then use the next half packet after the 24 hours. The reason that I've never tried this in the tank is because, number one, it's light sensitive. That means that uh, I keep the lights off in the treatment tank at all times. It's an antibiotic, so a lot of them are light sensitive and it can make it not work as well if you have highlights or brief lights or any kind of light, frankly, over the tank when you're using this medication. Um, it won't be as effective. So, also, it's really weird. I also always mix my medications outside of the tank, even if the seahorse is no, not in the tank yet. I still like to mix it outside just in case it doesn't dissolve something or another, anything. I like to make sure it's mixed before I add it to the tank or the quarantine tank, hospital tank. So, if I were to pour the Ferran in, it looks like a yellow powder. Ooh, don't let it fly up, it's dangerous. It has carcinogenic things in it, all antibiotics do. Try not to inhale it, etc., etc., so on and so forth. All right, so it looks yellow. It stays looking yellow. It's very weird when you're looking at it in a tank because the whole tank will be yellow. But make sure that's totally dissolved. We're going to do our triple sulfa now. Sorry. Always check expiration date. Make sure that it's not expired yet or it won't work. This is actually old medication. I need to replace it, but not yet expired. So I'm going to put in half of this packet. Okay. You're better off, honestly, to just use a 10-gallon tank or pour it completely out and measure it. It's not good to make approximations. I said that wrong, I think. But I've been doing this a long time. So, anyways. Stir that up. That is not yellow. Now we have our weird yellow Furin 2 and triple sulfa that we will add to pre-mixed salt water. I personally don't use tank water because as an antibiotic might kill off beneficial bacteria or you know any of the critters in the water i don't want any extra ammonia or any other problems that that might arise um, if i were to use this in the tank so that's why i use the quarantine and that's what our hospital tank and that's why i use fresh salt water versus tank water i just match the ph and temperature to make sure that it doesn't bother them so, add them. Then I'll add an air stone once I get my gloves on, and then the ponies will come next. This is a demonstration. Um, the pony was actually treated over a year ago, but you can see that the water remains yellow. Um, it's kind of freaky looking, but it's okay. Just means it's working. Make sure to keep the light off of it and. Get her done. When I was pre-mixing the medications, I you saw I was barehanded. Now that I'm actually playing with the water and going to add the seahorses into the water or add an air stone, actually I should have done that first, but so on. This is a demonstration. The seahorse was treated over a year ago. I'm just trying to show you how I did it. Um, but wear gloves. Any medication, wear gloves. It's just there's too much of a risk that there could be um, a reaction to a human. So, the water will look yellow. I have a blue background on this tank, so it's a little more difficult to see the actual yellow coloring, but there's also sediment on the sides. You need to add an air stone filter with any medication that you use, and I would personally gently swipe the sides to make sure everything's dissolved and mixed in. Add the air stone, get the temperature right, maybe test your pH, and then add the seahorses. The active ingredients in triple sulfa are basically three sulfas. They work very good against bacterial issues and um, can be combined with other medications like the Furon 2 
um, to pack a deeper punch and kill these bad guys before they hurt our seahorses. The Furon 2 has nitroferazone and Prozolidone and methylene blue. This is yet another reason that I advise using a hospital tank versus a display tank for treatment. The methylene blue is, is known to stain equipment. Um, as you've seen, the Furon 2 stains the water yellow. And I don't use much equipment in my hospital tank, so I can't tell you whether or not it will stain the equipment. I've not had it stain the tank, but I just wouldn't chance it. Also, the nitrofurazone and furzolidone, they treat both gram-positive and gram-negative bacterial issues. Um, when you think about the good bacteria in our tanks, we don't want to kill that. So when you're dealing with a medication that treats both gram-positive and gram-negative, I would never ever try that in my regular tank. Either it's so weak <laughs> that it's not going to kill anything anyways, or you're going to have problems. That's just my opinion, um, but anyways. Also, if you try this treatment of these two medications for the four-day uh, treatment dose, and you see some improvement, but it hasn't completely healed up, or you don't feel that they're completely better, you can give them a couple of days of break, do a few water changes, let them have some clean water, run some carbon, and then repeat the treatment. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you can also add other medications in with these two. Um, there are links all over, but I'm going to provide one that tells you contradictions and tells you what you should not mix together. But with Furan 2 and Triple Sulfide, I often mix in Canamycin or Canaplex, um, Metro. There, there are quite a few that can just give you a more overall, just in case you don't know what's really going on, treat everything at the same time without any harm. With any antibiotic medication, it is extremely important that you finish the full treatment, even if the seahorse seems better. If you stop the treatment early, you run the risk of allowing some of the bacteria that was hurting the seahorse to survive. That bacteria remaining can mutate and become resistant to the antibiotics. They're called superbugs and they're terrifying. The next time your seahorse gets sick, the antibiotics will no longer work because the bacteria will be resistant. Always finish full treatment. I did end up doing two rounds of the Furin 2 and Triple Sulfa to make sure that he, little William was indeed all better and left the three seahorses in quarantine until the new tank was built. Little William never regained his beautiful yellow color, but he's gone on to live a very happy life and is still with me today.